He is off to New York to record West Side Story with Leonard Bernstein. And this is where the canny captain's mind comes into its own. If she was a normal person, she would simply have stepped straight into the Mako Shark black limousine, ready to whisk her off to Heathrow. But she is not a normal person. <laughs> she is an opera singer. <laughs> Therefore, the clothes she wears are 30 years out of date. <laughs> And the Dolce Vita heel she wears clicks Fandango fashion on the side of Das Kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a depth charge. I thought stupid the depth charge in Covent Garden. <laughs> Blimey! Well, blow Catherine Mansfield down a kazoo. <laughs> I've not seen one of these since I was a little girl in Marura Maringa Barara Marara Marara. <laughs> I go down to the beach, I go down with Danny and Shirl, we put on the grass skirts and we go... Hold on! And we go... Kuramaru karima, kuramari karu, kurakaru... That's Kiwi Takanawa. Kurakaru makuna, punamami and my Kiwi. Hey, hey look, it's George Shorty coming to say cheerio. What a darling. Kiri. Carissima. <laughs> so you leave the garden. You leave the garden, but you do not leave it without my tongue going down like a chameleon into your stomach to see what you have your breakfast. Bellissima. Novidevi, Biasima. You are a bella, bella, beautiful woman. Leonard Bernstein will love every minute of you. Ah, yes. <laughs> Even though his hair is piled up like Lucille Ball, <laughs> and he looks like an ice blue petrified ice cream box. <laughs> You're not afraid of this. You will have a great time. Off you go. Bye, George. Thanks for the water bed. Oh, that is great, huh? <laughs> oh, that is terrific. Now we're off to New York. <laughs> we'll never see Germany again. You're so stupid. You're so stupid and cowardly. This is a great opportunity, so we have to wait for maybe 10. 20 years till we get back to Germany. Here is an opportunity to do what Germans do best when they cannot create something. Yeah, we destroy something. <laughs> we are going to this recording studio, yeah? They're making this West Side Story. So, we wait. We wait till there is perfect silence on those pine wood walls. And then we play the kazoo and ruin the recording. <laughs> Give you the signal. Just as the perfect moment for destroying the recording, we go ice, five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Los! <laughs> the recording will be kaput, and we will have our honor. <laughs> That was E flat. <laughs> the soloists are here, Mr. Bernstein. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is Miss Kiri Tekanoa. He'll be singing the part of Maria. Kiri. <laughs> Yummy. I didn't realize it. They tell the other guy that I want my shoes done black. I want my laundry back by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No, oh, this is Jose Carreras. He is not a waiter. He is the Spanish tenor. Who will be singing the part of Tony. What? See, si, Maestro, I, I am learning the part of Tony. I am it learning very well. You are it learning very well. Well, I, a Paco Manana, am not wanting am. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, Tony, we're not talking Little White Bull. We're not talking Guernica. We're not talking Castanets and Lady of Spain, I adore you. We're talking tight jeans. Miles Davis. That's America, not Spain. So go and do my shoes anyway. No, but I learned the part. <laughs> it breaks my heart, you know? I love the part. Get out of here. Okay, I'll give you a chance, okay? Turn to 58. Cinque, cinque. Ah. 
work. <laughs> right. Something's coming. We go now. No, we wait. We wait for the right moment. Go to the end of the kazoo. Yeah. So quiet. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, I am ready. Yeah, you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Something you any day, I will not strike away. Hola de ho! Stand up! What are you doing? Could be. Who knows? It's ka, 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 ka. There ain't a pile of friggin' gardening implements at the beginning of each word. Huh? I'm sorry, my throat, it's my accent. Yeah, I know it's your accent. And you're Americano, not Cesar Romero. No Mexicans. They don't come into their story. They don't even serve the dessert. Huh? Okay. You loose. Loosen up. Forget you're fighting the bull. You're singing a song, huh? Loosen the shoulders. We go? No, wait. I am ready. Okay. And. Something do any day, I will know right away. That's very good. A river! No! Not a river! Not come home, Speedy Gonzalez. I mean, how many times I gotta do this? I'm 69 years of age. Look at the lines in my face. Imagine what my balls look like, huh? <laughs> now, obviously, you got a little memory problem. Your head's full of Don Quixote and the, the West Berlitz Guide to Eastern Spain. So we're gonna have to wake up the memory banks, right, Capiche? See, si. good. This is my friend Miguel and Mike. They're from the Bronx and the Queens. And if you get a note wrong, they're gonna put so many holes in your head, you are going to look like an ocarina, right? <laughs> See, si. Right. They go this time, have a look. But Maestro, I cannot sing. Shut up! Okay. Okay. Now everybody's relaxed. <laughs> and... Get ready, yes? To the end of the kazoo, yeah? Yes. Ice, five, three, four, four, six, loose! <laughs> you better! Kiri. <laughs> All the time I'm thinking it's Paco the Taco. <laughs> and it's the bitch with the H, right? <laughs> that's great, that's great. Kiri, it is in two. Get some Ibu steak. So I finish the coffee and then we go again. <coughs> this is a wet here or something. This is a wasa. Hey, next time wasa. It is a coffee. It's decaffeinated. I don't care if it's decaffeinated. <laughs> We're drowning quick. Climb up to the bit of tissue paper. Quickly! Ah! Nice und! I am drowning! Laurent Salivia presents the glory that was a rope. A rope. A dear, 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 dear rope. <laughs> Set there like a mighty carbuncle in the Etrurian hills of Italy and round and round the ragged rocks of that town went Romulus and Remus trying to decide what name to give it. Oh, I think we should call it Rome. Hmm? Oh, get out of here. I think we should call it Reem. Why, Reem? What are you talking about? When in Reem, do as the Remans do? <laughs> so Rome was born in a mood of discord, the clash of mighty opposites, Everybody was running around all over Rome, battering into each other. Well, what would you do with a pile of muscadels piled up on your nose? Greetings, Linnaeus Maninius. Greetings to you, Alinius Vercinius. So all of them were battering into each other. But the Romans were bright. They formed handshaking lessons. Hello. 
My name is uh, Marcus Australis. I'm going to be teaching you how you can shake hands with your brother, your mother, your sister, even with a bunch of grapes in your nose, and you still know who you're shaking hands with, OK? So really, loosen that thumb, loosen that forefinger, and greetings, Meninius Meninius, OK? Right? And greetings, Meninius Meninius. Right? I think we got that. Now, a little bit further, the full greeting, Greetings, Vinius Meninius. Have you heard the news from Macedonia? <laughs> right? But Rome could not carry on just doing clever handshakes. She was still a republic. <laughs> and she had yet to become an empire. But to be an empire, you need an emperor. Empire, empire. I stick it up in your jump. <laughs> so, who was to be emperor of a Rome? It's quite simple. They picked the history books, held them open, and there, star of Z cars for 20 years. <laughs> Brian Blessed was to be emperor of Rome. But who to be his wife? How do you pick a wife? It's quite simple. You hold a Roman equivalent of a Tudor banquet, like those nap things they hold at Hatfield. <laughs> and everyone running around throwing their drumsticks and chicken legs at each other. And then as everyone is in a Belshazzar's feast way enjoying themselves, an old hobbledy high figure comes a limping in, doing a very bad impersonation of Jethro Tull, and cries out, List! List, mighty Caesar! Thou shalt marry, and thy wife's name will be Livia. And into the room she came, her belly dancing from side to side, like a pendulum of Madonna. She was beautiful, she was lovely, but she was also Livia newton John. <laughs> Round and roads, take me home to the place. <laughs> they crucified her. Still. <laughs> Within a week, he had married again with the right Livia. And she was a right Livia. And she bore him a strange son. Forth from her loins, he came twitching and pulling his face to left and right. <laughs> it was Ian McKellen. They drowned him at birth. <laughs> but because she was a fictional character, she was giving birth again. This time, two. Fourth they came. The first one blowing out the alphabet and sucking it back in like a lexographic whale. Who was it? Yes, it was Claudius. Derek Jacobi, mewling, a weak, puling. Obviously destined to be an emperor of Rome. <laughs> but the other was a very different kettle of piscators. Blue eyes. Big, rosy, red Augustus who would not eat his soup cheeks. He was healthy. He was fat. He could not live. So and they took him up into the mighty Tiber and lowered him like a Kentucky Fried Chicken straight into the water. And as they did so, all were struck by the fact that his eyes and never left the surge, wherever they moved him. Moved him to left, moved him to right, even wrote, Kilroy was here! <laughs> his eyes would not leave his reflection. They called him Wogan. <laughs> so, while the other boys were off in the Etrurian hills, practicing the postures of famous classical sculpture, <laughs> Wogan was off in the other hills, learning how to play golf with his old friends Kenny Lynch and Sean Connery. So, there he is. We leave him in that publius happiness of childhood. But meanwhile, what is happening in Rome? Ryan Blessed has got to go and do cats. So who, who can be the new emperor? Caligula. John Hurt can be the new emperor of Rome. Look at me! Look at me shifting my sentences up and down in a strange Grampian sort of way. And then when I choose the precise moment, my sentence goes up like an Innsbruck ski jump into a weird and peculiar intonation. Come, all of you. Pull out last year's Christmas wrapping paper, pull it tight between your legs, and mince around the set. Mince to left, mince to right, and you, go forth, you, 
and get me chicken wire and bits of old plaster of Paris that I might heap them upon my head so I might be the elephant man. Come, all of you, go off and get me these things. And so they did. In every direction they went, to left, to right. And as they did so, Rome, Rome became weak. Her borders were unprotected. And massing at her border were the barbarians. From every direction they came. From the north, the Visigoths, led by Jack Palance. From the east, the Ostrogoths, led by Tony Curtis. And worst of them all, the Quins, led by Zorba, the Quin. <laughs> what? Be you amazed? Look down there upon Rome. It is but a tethered goat, and we are the wolf. It is a budgerigar, and we the highland cattle. Come, nuzzle your elbows in its antlers, and rub rich oil into your saturated technicolor bodies until you look like tandoori chickens. Hi. Threw away their swords, threw away their bows, threw away their shillelaghs. <laughs> and sat down and had a chat show. <laughs> so would you please welcome our first director, Mr. Lindsay Anderson. I agreed to do this program for two reasons. One, because I wish to discuss the position of British Marxist cinema. And secondly, because I needed new dentures. <laughs> and I think there might also be another reason, and that it is I wanted to make it quite clear that I bear no malice towards those directors who have single-mindedly destroyed the British film industry, <laughs> which I, of course, helped to create. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to begin now with a film I made 20 years ago called The Big White Milk Float. <laughs> and here it is. Excuse me, mister. Excuse me, mister. We just ran out of the rubble. We just ran out of the rubble. Out of the <laughs> Give me some sherbet dabs, please. Give me some macarons. What are you talking about, sweet? I was still rationing on. Get out of it. <laughs> Even after 20 years, it's still a very sophisticated piece of work. <laughs> but there was one thing, one small thing which annoyed me, and it was that Tom, Tom Bentley, who played the milkman, actually cast aspersions upon my Marxist beliefs. So I went to visit Tom in his little house in Stepney. I knocked on the door in true Brestian fashion. Tom came to the door. Oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. How are you doing? I've seen you for years. Yes, I've been making films, Tom. Oh, that's funny. Kirsten, Kirsten, come to the magazine, please. Well, I've been getting Screen International for 20 years. I've never seen your name crop up. <laughs> oh, no, except when you did Thunderbirds. <laughs> now, that was Jerry Anderson, Tom. <laughs> Anyway, I walked into Tom's simple house, and what did I see? I saw what narrow-minded people always see, precisely what I expected. <laughs> there was the Canvatex Van Gogh, the obligatory Dusky Maiden, and, of course, J.M.W. Turner's The Fighting Temeraire. I see you have The Fighting Temeraire, Tom. Yes, yeah, the very nice painting's beautiful. It's the sort of painting you can walk right into. <laughs> and what if we were to walk into the fighting Temeraire? What would we see? There is the sun, dancing in the heavens, like a bright ball of wool. And over to the left, the mighty Temeraire, tattered veteran of Trafalgar, being pulled by the black packet steamer. And there, perhaps in the foreground, is Turner painting. 
Um, Jack, could you do me a favor? Could you bring the stern of the Temeraire around very slightly to the left? Um, I'm getting light on the spars, and if I get light on the spars, I really don't think we've got a painting. Um, so, could you just pull it round just, just slightly more? Um, love to help you, Joe. Uh, bouncing up and down here on my John Snag type Oxford and Cambridge boat launch. Um, however, if we bring the baby round, there is a problem. Could put her derriere straight onto the sands. Um, could you ask the sun to move? I mean, maybe the sun could move. <laughs> yes. Hello? Is it possible for you to move about six inches to the right? Well, I can go anywhere you want, shape, you say. There's only one problem, you see. I can't stay. I don't have time on my side. I've got no time, you see. Because at five o'clock, at five o'clock, I've got to go off to Winchester to help John Keats write the Ode to Autumn. <laughs> oh, I see. I say, I'm oh, sorry to bother you again, uh, Joe, but it looks like your wife, Tina, is approaching on a windsurfer. <laughs> when what? I was a little girl, I had a right now. Only now I have <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, nice of you to, to drop in. Look, I, I'm in the middle of a painting. Oh, baby, you're always in the middle of a painting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this lovely linseed oil here. Why do you waste it on that paper? Why don't you squeeze it under my body? <laughs> That's enchanting. Um, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I've got to go. It's come up to five o'clock. I mean, John Keats really needs me. Oh, screw Keats. <laughs> <laughs> screw Keats. Darling, you know John Keats, don't you? Um, look, uh, <laughs> there's his address. There's a, a train ticket. OK, so you go and say hello to him and... Say hello to the Grecian urn, all right? <laughs> Great. Right, we've got the sun, we've got the Temeraire, and we've got the packet steamer. Oh, sorry, there is another problem. What? There is another problem, I'm afraid. It's just that the packet steamer has to go because David Lee needs it. He's filming Great Expectations. Well, you can wait. No, I can't. I don't wait for anybody. Least of all, somebody who paints sunsets because he can't do fingers. <laughs> <laughs> David Lee. The man who created the world. Sir John Mills remembers. Uh, <clears throat> I, um, I think there's several important things to remember about the British film industry. And the first, of course, is that myself and Brian Forbes and, of course, dear Nanette, um, <laughs> uh, still wear those rammy old sideboards we should have shaved off in 1976. Um, but apart from that, I think nobody really appreciates that before David came along, uh, there simply wasn't a world. Uh, we were just <laughs> atoms and neutrinos sort of rotating in space. And then David came and, quite simply, created the universe. <laughs> OK, help the work. Do we have perfect chaos? John Sparks? John Sparks, do we have perfect chaos? Good, right, I'm just going to talk to Rod. It's God, sir. Sorry, God. God, um, <laughs> what I'm going to do here is quite tricky. It's a tracking shot. I'm coming right round onto you. The precise moment you can see the lens, I want you to spread your spirit and your light upon the waters. Is that all right? Um, yes. Well, we'll say yes, but the time's going, the light's going. Come on. Can we do something with his beard? It's, it's, it's very sort of Wessel Gummidge. Make up! <laughs> hey, can we do something with his beard, please? Thank you, yes. Oh, the Lord's going to. Yes, I know. Um, uh, I think we better change the lens. Uh, can, we have a, can we have a day for night lens, please? Come on, hurry up! Thank you. My God, this is quite tricky. Um, I know you're a deity, but inversion can be tricky even for them. What, what I want to do is to make it daylight, even though, in fact, it is dark. So it will be a strange sort of paradox. Even though we are in darkness, um, the effect will be that of light. Uh, no, no, they don't um and ah. Look, look, you've got to say if there's a difficulty. No, it's just, I mean, I, I, mean, I am God. I mean, and if I say spread the light and it's dark, I mean, I begin creation with a lie, don't I? Yes, but uh, creation takes place on the cutting room floor. <laughs> right. Um, can we, um, oh, the light's going very bad. Is, is Ben Kingsley there, please? Ben, 
Hello, Ben. I am Gandhi. Yes, we know you're Gandhi. <laughs> ben, um, and we'd like you, we'd actually like you to stay, Gandhi, for about another ten minutes. Could you bounce your big brown Bambi eyes straight onto God's face? I am Bambi Gandhi. I am Gandhi Bambi. Where is Thumper? That's it, keep going. Where is Thumper? Where is Thumper? Sound running. On with the film. I am Gandhi. I am Bambi. No, it's no good. The light's going. No, the light's going, quick. Oh, no, it's gone. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Winchester, Keats is writing. <laughs> Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bloody sun gone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what do you want? Nice garden you've got here. <laughs> Asphodels. Chrysanthemums. <laughs> Gladioli. <laughs> now, if he was a gentleman, You'd pick me one. <coughs> That's, of course, how churlish of me. Um, <laughs> that, that asphodel is rather nice. That's yeah, right. Oh, oh, <laughs> Sorry. I seem to have got my hair caught in that chain around your waist. And you don't like it there. Mm -hmm. You don't like it there. What? You don't like it there. No, I don't like it there. Will you let me get up, please? <laughs> I don't understand you romantic boys. You write about your belle dame, sans merci. Your thing of beauty is a joy <laughs> forever. <laughs> and there you are next to the best body in Christendom and all you can think about is shimmying back to your Basildon bound. <laughs> you come with me. Tina will make you a man. She will turn you into T.S. Eliot. No! No! Please! And there, with Ken Russell's altered Keats, <laughs> we see the depths to which the British film industry has sunk. <laughs> Meryl Streep. Robert Redford. In Out of Africa. I had a farm <laughs> of accents. <laughs> Every day I would water my accents, hoping that one day they would grow up into Oscars. <laughs> I watered my Sophie's Choice accent, my Silkwood accent, <coughs> even my Daffy Duck accent. <laughs> I was the only person in Art of Africa with an accent. <laughs> Robert Redford did not have an accent. <laughs> and although Klaus Maria Brenda had an accent, he was aware most of the time was suffer <laughs> One day, I was walking through my accents when Sabu came up to me. Mr. Street, the accents are ready for Oscaring. <laughs> Thank you, Sabu. And then, who should I see running across the field but Helen Mirren? She had escaped from the White Knight's plane. I waved to her and called out. Hold on! <laughs> Hold on! At first, she did not recognize my oxen. <laughs> but maybe that was because she was concentrating on her Russian oxen, which kept slipping away from her. <laughs> quick, quick, you must come quickly. At any moment, I could turn into Jimmy Neal. You must tell to help me stay. Stay here in my Russian accent. And the plane has crashed. 
Mikhail Baryshnikov and Gregory Hines. They have crashed into the field. But Mikhail, you look just like Anthony Hopkins. That's right. That's right, I am Anthony Hopkins. I got fed up of working at the National, you know, being uh, Anthony and Cleopatra and all that. So I decided to swap with uh, Mikhail because he looks like me. So he's uh, hopping around for me at the National at the moment. You're standing on my accents. What? You're standing on my accents. You're trembling my accents into the ground. Your accents? Yes, one day they will grow up into Oscars. Accents. Oscars. You are weak because you do not know what accent you believe in. <laughs> What should I do, Anthony? Do what most Americans do. Find a religion. <laughs> and there was war in heaven. Lucifer, Mammon, Beelzebub, all rebelled against the Lord, for he had worked with David Lee. <laughs> <laughs> and up they went to heaven. Blowing those naff brass trumpets that you buy in Islington antique shops clear into his face. And the Lord was wroth. And he held them and hurled them like a canaster pack down to hell. Down they went, all except Lucifer, who was caught up in a spindrift of Jared Mandley Hopkins surf and battered against the windows of a lighthouse on the north coast of Scotland, just as young Gavin, the lighthouse keeper, was coming up to trim the lamp. <laughs> what are you doing out there? What? Would you let me in? Aye, yes. Oh, what are you doing out there night like this? So if you drink it wet. How do you get to the top of the lighthouse? What? How do you get to the top of a lighthouse? <laughs> oh, 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 top of the lighthouse? Um, I was hand gliding. I was on the cliff and I just hand glided. Oh, it's strange, what, in the middle of the night? Like the middle of the night? Yes, it's not even in the middle of the night. It's more fun that time. <laughs> oh, well, you, you want a toddy or something? A what? You just want a toddy. <laughs> well, it's whiskey and, and uh, hot water and a bit of lemon and that. You know, push it down your throat, it stops you getting all peely wally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> well, we're just about to hear tea. Just want to come down and join us. Have your tea, yes. <laughs> so. Satan followed Gavin down the circles of the lighthouse to the little parlour where old Fergus, the father, was sitting at the head of the table. Theodore, there's a man here. A man? <laughs> Morag, cover you your ankles, you shameless bitch. <laughs> so what are you doing out in a muckle night like this? Um, I, I, I was hand gliding. <laughs> you were what? <laughs> I, I was hand gliding. Oh, you'll be a novelist then. <laughs> <laughs> we were just about to hear tea. You want to sit down? Yes. I'm going to say Grace. Any objections? No. You're near Catholic, are you? <laughs> uh, lapsed. <laughs> right. Feather, look down on us here as we gorge our bloated bodies <laughs> upon this circular milliliter of fish finger. <laughs> if for one second we enjoy it, send us piles, <laughs> puppies, <laughs> housemaid's knee in the back of our necks, oh, feather. May we die writhing in agony. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you may eat. If you have the stomach. <laughs> Thank you. So Satan stayed in the lighthouse. And he learned how to fish, and land mackerel, wear big Tony Soper jerseys. <laughs> oh, there were bad times. Oh, there were indeed bad times. But there were good times, too. <laughs> With more <laughs> <laughs> but it could not go on like this. Life could not remain such a beautiful paradise. 
He knew that every second, the parking meter of time was ticking round and he would have to go to hell. So one night, he had a man-to-devil conversation with young Gavin. <coughs> Gavin, I've not been very straight with you when I said I was a merchant banker. Um, <laughs> I'm not, actually. I'm, I'm afraid... I'm afraid I'm Satan. What, the devil? Yes. <coughs> oh, father. <laughs> Hell rider. Death. Huh? Yes. And I was wondering, since you obviously want to go and see the big cities, the bright lights and all that, and as I like Morag and I like living here, I just wondered whether you'd like to do a swap. What, you mean, maybe Prince of Darkness now? Yes. <laughs> do you get to travel? Never. Do you go to Carnaby Street and meet Bruce Springsteen, people like that? Yes. <laughs> Can I go to Hibs and uh, Celtic on the same day? Yes. <laughs> we'll meet Kenny Dalglish. <laughs> I did. And so, like Mephistopheles, tricking Faust, his fate was sealed and he was led off to the crack in the world's end. The other one apart from Chernobyl. And at the last minute, his eyes spun round to see the face of Satan, fool Valentine Dial. But it was no good. <laughs> he had sealed his fate, and he was hurled headlong, Gustav Dore fashion, down to hell. Oh, oh, pull my bloody leg! <laughs> where have you been? What? I said, where have you been? Centuries have gone by. There've been plagues, pestilence, wars. We don't have you to organise properly. We can't get Mitsubishi or Wang. It's Brook Street Girl, Sloppy Girl, all the way. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm sitting up there at home, I'm chatting to my friend and everything. The next minute, I'm hauled in here into this blinking boiler who's full of Jesses with red tights on. <laughs> so tell us what's going on. I'll tell you what's going on. Christ is up there in the desert. I can't tempt him. It's got to be you. So get up there and tempt him. I don't know what you're talking about! It was too late. He was hurled up into the desert where Christ was waiting. Father! Father, I burn. I thirst. I look like Billy Connolly. <laughs> Help me, Father. Father! Oh, you! Oh, 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 so there you are. That's what you look like. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know where I am. What? I says I don't know where I am. Well, that's no good. I can't understand him. I can't understand him. <laughs> well, how can he tempt me if I can't understand him? <laughs> what? Yes, g give me a jotter and a, a pen. Yes. It's by the phone. <laughs> Leave it by the phone. <laughs> right, right, you come on, Jockey Thistle. Don't call me Jockey Thistle. <laughs> I might have guessed Christ was English. God, I might have guessed that. <laughs> Spiky. All right, you're not inventing the steam engine. Why don't you put some temptations down there? I know how to use a pencil. Don't talk to me like you're friggin' Kenneth Baker. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> there you go. Right. So fix your wagon. It's the last sail you're doing on that wave, Ali. <laughs> there you go. There is a Susie Quattro and White Snake concert next week at the Kelvin Hall. <laughs> Would you like to go? <laughs> No. What? You don't want to see White Snake. I'm giving you the chance to see White Snake. Well, that shows you're a dully, doesn't it? I'll try another one. Now hurry up, I die at 33. Get on with it. Um, right. This is you on toast, Tom. There is a Scots wool shop at Inverkip. I can get you dukies, bonnets, and quick magus. <laughs> you don't know what No. Or quick magus if you say Graham Souness is the new messiah. <laughs> no. 
and so it went on. <laughs> temptation after temptation. The devil was defeated. Christ was triumphant. And that is why the world is such a good place. Thank you. Good night. Yeah.